Hi, um, this is Rebecca Sackett. Um, I did a video yesterday that was showing this uh, approval process that I basically have um, within an app. And one of the questions that was asked was in regards to how my um, data is set up for it. So um, it's all on SharePoint list. Um, and I have one, two, three, six different SharePoint lists. Um, and I'm going to show you here from the new request. It'll be the easiest way. So the first one I have um, is going to be this that kind of stores all of this data. So um, I call it Biller. So it's going to store the call slip number, the customer name, the salesman, all of this information. Um, for these right here, I store these as a, a single line text field. Um, and so the card updates with um, what that value is. Uh, the reason I do that is because, especially with putting it over on a document and stuff, you have to do a lot of um, changing the true to yes and uh, a lot of different extra steps. Um, I don't allow anybody to type into it. It's always a radio button, so it's always going to be yes or no. Those are the two choices. Um, it's also uh, defaults to no, so they can never not have it, an answer. You know, it won't let you just unclick it. So um, because I have this default here on this radio button set up to um, no, uh, it's never going to not have a value. Uh, it's just kind of one. Uh, I like it better than I do uh, doing the yes, no columns. Um, so a lot of times I'll do the text fields. Uh, these, of course, are both people fields. Uh, and this one here is going to be uh, a number of currency. I use the um, ID number on the SharePoint list a lot. That is what is my tie point. So um, anytime that you create an item on SharePoint list, it's automatically given an auto ID. They just call it ID. Um, it's always there. You won't see it by default, but if you go to your uh, list settings, you can change the view where you can um, see it. So um, I use it a lot. So that is what I use to tie all of these different SharePoint lists together. So, um, then this, uh, the documents here that I have, I have four different ones, the call summary, cost audit, invoice, and service call. Those are each their own SharePoint list. Um, they don't have a lot of fields. Uh, I think I have, um, I had the title field, which you'll always have to have, which is gonna pull this call slip number. Um, I have one that's called the biller ID, which is gonna be the ID number that's generated by this. Um, I like to use the ID number, even though I also do have the call slip number. The reason I use it is for flow. So um, from a flow standpoint, whenever I have that number, instead of having to um, use the title field, I can use the get item instead of get items, which is going to work a lot faster, a lot cleaner, and a lot more reliable. So um, I always pull that number in. So it just has the um, call slip number, the auto ID that's created by this, and then uh, the status. And then, of course, I use the attachments. That's where the document is. So um, let me show kind of what I have in those forms. I'm not going to submit this. Um, I did go back and change this to default. Uh, I was going to mention if you had never uh, done that before. So I have on the apps on start, it creates a variable that um, is the current user. Uh, not the current user display name, like just the current user. So then for here, you can do the default selected items display name as the current user, but this is not going to write to the SharePoint list if that's all you do. You have to do a second part, which is right here on this update. Um, so I'm going to say that uh, if the um, combo box display name that's selected is the current user, then this is what I want to do. Otherwise, put who's selected. So basically, it's going to default to the current user, but allow them to change it if they want to. Um, this right here, you can use exactly the same if you ever want to be able to um, make it put the current user in there. Um, of course, this is my variable name here, this underscore current user. So if you used a different version you know, of the variable name, um, you could put that. But if you ever need that, that's what that is. So um, I put all this in and you will also notice here that if I have, see that's a required field, I can't see the little button to go forward. Once I put something in, then I can. And then this won't let me submit until all of these are done. So um, 
This one here, like I said, this call summary, this is one of the documents. This is its own SharePoint list, so it's actually a separate form. So what I did here is the title field, I have it default into the um, variable call slip number. I'm going to show you in a second where that gets set. And then um, the status is just going to be attached. This is really not necessary. I actually needed it for somewhere else. But it's saying that um, if this is empty, um, then make it say not attached. If it is not empty, then make it say attached. So that's giving it kind of a status. Um, the status field is really not needed. Um, the reason I normally do that on a SharePoint list is for the archive. So it's always pretty much going to be attached is the status. But later on when it gets closed, I can make it change it to close and then have something triggered that, hey, when this gets closed, take it and move it. So um, it really doesn't have much to do with the Power App itself. Uh, it's for the end is why. Um, that's just a title box there. Uh, and so then I have my little attachment control here um, that is always on a SharePoint list. It's a default. There's always going to be that attachment. And I changed it to the max attachment one. So it's only going to let them put one document in there. Uh, and then this one here for the biller ID is also going to be a variable. So that one's very biller ID. Um, and that's the only fields that are really populated. And the only one that's showing is going to be the attachment one. So I did the exact same thing for the cost audit, invoice, and service call. Um, the other two SharePoint lists I have is one for comments and one for actions. So we'll look at those over on the um, edit side um, in the edit screen. So what happens here is whenever I get all the fields done, then this right here will be um, active. So what it does is it's going to show this loading that I have, and then it's going to submit the first form which is um, the main one, the, the um, biller. Let me see what it is. Call slip new. Here it is. The biller one. So this one has some actions on its on success. So the button submits this form, and then it goes through and does some stuff. So it says, I want you to set the variable call slip number to form call slip add new, which is this form. So last submitted title and then set my biller ID to the forms last submit ID. And then it's going to submit the other ones. It's going to submit the call summary, which uses both of these variables. It's going to submit the cost audit, submit the invoice, submit the service call. Um, the comment, because mine is an option, so it's going to look at that radio button I had and say, if somebody put yes, then submit it. Um, and then if not, don't. And then the action is going to actually default. So um, the actions is never put in by person. It is all by um, other things. So it's always a, a patch everywhere. So it's creating a new item. So it's patch actions, and then I'll have default actions. And then the title is going to be the call slip number. Uh, the biller ID is going to be, that's set there with the biller ID. And it's going from enter to first pass. So these right here, I have, basically, I wrote them down before I did them to make sure that they always match up. And I force all these. Nobody can ever uh, add an action. The action is because somebody did something. Um, and then it says go home. So after all of that's done, you know, go go back to the home screen because you're done. Uh, you could also make it go to a confirmation or show pop-up for a confirmation. I do have some apps that I do that. It just kind of depends on your user. Um, and also, I use this loading a lot. So um, this right here is just kind of uh, a three-part thing. So one is just a box that's shaded. One is just this little spinner that, I don't know, I got free somewhere. Um, and then one is just a label that says, hey, loading, please wait. So um, most of my screens have this um, if there's anything that gets submitted, like a form that gets submitted. Um, since I'm still working on this one, I have a lot of screens I haven't deleted. And one of them is where I just keep this. So I have all my loading parts. Um, so if I need to, when I get done with the screen, I basically come over here, copy it, paste it, put it over there. Um, so that's just kind of what I got on the data source. Um, and then let me go to, I put a couple in here. So then, um, well, let me show you this too. So on here, this has a variable, this var assigned that is signed um, every time you click on something. So this variable is the same name. This one's called view all. This one's called view mine. 
Uh, this one's called First Pass. It's all taken to the same exact screen. So the way that it works is this screen here is the same for everybody. It's just there's different things. So I have this gallery, for example. It has, uh, I use switched, and it's looking at the VeriSand. And it says, um, if it's view all, then I only want you to filter for open. If it's view mine, I only want you to filter for open and um, where I'm the salesman or I'm the biller. So it kind of goes through the switch, and that's what decides what shows here. And the same is for the buttons in the action section here. Not only do I change off of that variable what um, what happens when you click on it, but I also actually change what text shows. So um, you can see here, let me see if I can get this to drag. Oh, there it is. Um, so it says if uh, the VeriSign, if I'm on first pass, I want it to say return biller. If I'm on salesman review, I want it to return to first pass. So it's the same button. I don't have to duplicate it. It just changes what it says so that they know. Uh, another option would just be, you know, return or back, something that's more generic. And then the on select of it all, does the same thing. It has a um, switch where it kind of says which actions. So um, the on switch um, on select of it is going to say you're going to patch the biller, so it's going to change the current step. It's sending it back, and then it's also going to um, create a new action, which is saying it got returned. So it's going to do those two things. Um, so here's the only one. On If you use switch, sometimes I'll do this where I do an if statement, and sometimes I do switch. If you do switch, you always have to have a, if it's not any of these, here's what I want to happen. So um, what I do is I'll put, I want it to send you back to the home screen. Uh, it should never, it should never do that. Um, it should not happen. But what it does for me is it allows me that if somebody tells me, hey, every time I click this, all it does is send me back to the home screen, I know. So it kind of gives me an indicator um, that something's not working right. So that's why I kind of, I didn't want it to just not do anything. Um, I could have just, you know, pick something generic, but I wanted it to actually take an action if none of these are being met. Uh, in theory, that should never happen, but um, that'll let me know easily something's not right. Uh, same with on the action, so, um, which it wouldn't get to this point if, um, if this part wasn't met. Um, the, I did add on this where you return, uh, I mentioned yesterday that I wanted to, that if you do, it's going to uh, initiate them to put in a new comment right then. So um, if I wanted to return this to the biller, it'll do it, but it's going to say, hey, go ahead and, you know, put in a comment. So I could say, um, you know, need to update documents or whatever. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to take this out. The person who it's going back to is the biller um, or at any time, they're already going to get an email saying that something's assigned to them. Uh, and no matter how many times I tell people that you don't really have to do this right now, um, they'll often still put in a name. So then the person's getting two emails, you know, one because they got tagged and one because something got returned. So uh, what I may do is make this where it's not visible if, um, if this is the time it's clicked. But I haven't got that far yet to decide if I need to do that. So um, then the other side of that is um, the going forward. See, this person here, um, because it's on the very first part, they can't send it any further back. So what I did is I made this button where it's not visible for them. They can't see it. And then this one, uh, it's kind of the same thing. So it's um, where it does the, um, where it updates the current step. And then where it also um, posts a new action. So um, this is this action part is also what is going to decide whenever a person gets an email. So I can say um, if uh, a new action is created and the two part is salesman review, then uh, get the item and tell me who the salesman is and send him an email. It's basically... <laughs> Uh, it um, this here is always the same people, so I wouldn't have to really look for anything on it. 
Um, so that's why I use the numbers a lot is because it's going. So on my actions, it has that biller ID. So I can say the action and then tell me what the biller ID is and then get the item instead of having to do the full get items where it has to put it in apply to each. So um, that's why I like using the number. So um, that's kind of how that works. Uh, and then lastly, um, let me see how I'm doing on time. I think I may do the flow on a separate one. So I'll do the flow um, and try to break it down in a little detail, the final part that creates the folder, the document, all that. Um, I'll try to do that one this afternoon. But uh, this kind of just gives an idea on the data sources, uh, <clears throat> why I do it the way I do and how it works. Um, the only other part I was going to mention is that if you go to change the document, so right here it's showing the document, right? Um, also, this took me a while to figure out. Um, I finally got it to work right. This I use switch to so that I don't have to do different PDF viewers. Um, forever, it seemed like I could not seem to get this to work right, but I finally did. So this, um, each of these buttons, it sets a variable here that's called ver document to tell you what to show. Um, and so it flips through these because these are actually different galleries here um, because they're on different SharePoint lists. Um, you could, in theory, do one uh, SharePoint list that's documents and have one of the uh, fields be which type of document. And you could say either call summary or cost audit or invoice or service call. Um, there's a few things. It gets you more items on the list and um, there's a few things like that on, uh, it's a lot more filtering that you have to add, but, uh, it would, in theory, it should work really the same. Um, I just kind of like this route better. I like having my stuff split out into lots of SharePoint lists, uh, largely because I used access before, so I'm kind of used to it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, when you go here to this edit, the reason this is actually a new item, it's not, um, it's not an edit. I mean, I know it looks like it's editing, but so what it's doing is it's allowing them to um, update a new one. So on the main list, that biller one, it stores the call summary ID, all, all the different documents. It has a column, it's a number column that allows it to fetch um, those items. <clears throat> so this one, what it does is uh, when you click update, it just, yeah, it just submits the form. And then on the success of it, it, um, it sets the ID for this form. And then it changes that call summary ID to the most recent. And then, it, of course, it creates a new comment that says, hey, the call summary was updated. Um, I put the status of system so that I know that it was auto-generated. And then it'll refresh and then it'll hit back a screen. <clears throat> So what it does is that it's not deleting um, or removing the old one. So if they ever really needed it, we could pull it back up the first version. Um, it, but it is saying that, hey, this is the active one. This is the most recent. This is the, the one I want everybody to see. So um, it's kind of basically allowing for versioning, um, which uh, I'm not sure how much we'll need it, but um, we're going to try it to see if, uh, if we're going to use it a lot. So it really wasn't any extra steps to do that. So um, I just kind of kept it that way. But if you do need versioning, this is a good way to allow for that. So anyway, uh, so yeah, this is pretty much how the data source side works. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And I'll try to, um, when I get some stuff done and have some time this afternoon, I'll try to do a little more on the flow part. All right. Thanks.